Welcome back AP Chemistry students to Unit 4 Chemical Reactions. Today we'll be talking about Unit 4.2 Net Ionic Equations. When we look at a chemical reaction, we are looking at a what's called a molecular reaction where we show the molecules as a whole. However, in reality, those molecules don't exist as a whole if they're soluble. If I have an aqueous solution of lead nitrate and potassium iodide and I mix them, they'll make a solid insoluble lead iodide, which does exist as a molecule on its own. Lead nitrate exists as ions in solution, and so does potassium iodide. So when we put them into solution, when we have an aqueous median, the iodides pair up with the leads and become insoluble. The potassiums and nitrates are still in solution, but they remain ions. So while we simplify this and show a molecular equation with molecules that form an insoluble salt and ions, those ions we would be better represented as a complete ionic equation where we show how, how the ions exist in solution, where we have aqueous ions that form a solid salt. But this, as you can see, is very complicated. There's a lot of players here. And two of them don't change. The nitrate and potassium are the same on both sides of the reaction. There's a small typo here. This should be a two. But they're the same on both sides of the reaction. Nitrate remains the nitrate ion. Potassium remains the potassium cation. They don't change. In all honesty, I could substitute them with other soluble salts. Instead of using potassium, I could use sodium and have the exact same reaction. Instead of using nitrate, I could use acetate and have the exact same reaction. So these two ions are known as spectator ions. They don't change. They're easily replaced. They have no purpose in the overall reaction other than to carry the players, the ions that actually change. So your spectator ions uh, could be removed to give us what's known as a net ionic equation where we show the overall change, what actually happened, where we started with aqueous ions and ended up with an insoluble salt. When it comes to writing net ionic equations and determining, uh, determining which are your spectator ions, spectator ions are going to be things that are always soluble. So all of your nags are going to be spectator ions with the two exceptions of PMS or Castro Bear coming into play. At least for precipitation reactions. In a precipitation reaction where we perform a precipitate, you need to remember your solubility rules. So if we are given a molecular reaction, we can pick out our spectator ions if we remember our nags. So right off the back, we remember that nitrates are always soluble, so nitrate is not going to be in our net ionic equation. It is most likely a spectator. And if we wrote out the complete ionic equation, sure enough, we end up with nitrate as a product and nitrate as a reactant, and therefore they cancel one another out. They are a spectator. Of all the ions present here, none of them fit into our nags with the exception of sulfate. Remember sulfate is insoluble in the presence of P, 
PMS, which we do not have, or Castro Bear, and sure enough, here's the Cass in our Castro Bear. So <clears throat> this is not a spectator ion, which means the aluminum must have been the spectator ion. When you remove your spectator ions, that gives you your net ionic equation. There used to be a whole subsection of the, SO, of the AP exam on writing net ionic equations. That has since been removed. However, there are some good tips to take from it if you're ever asked to, if you're ever asked to predict the products of a reaction. <clears throat> so these are in your notes, but as they are not critical to know, if you are going for a five, you might want to look them over. If you're happy with a two or a three, let's press on to example nine. We're asked to write the molecular equation so all the molecules, and then write the complete ionic equation and then boil that down to the net ionic reaction, which is going to obviously take up lots of space. So for this first one, aqueous potassium chloride, potassium chloride uh, is added to silver nitrate to form silver chloride and potassium nitrate. First things first, you have to make sure the reaction is balanced. One potassium makes one potassium, one chloride makes one chloride, one silver makes one silver, and one nitrate makes one nitrate. This is balanced. If we want to show this as the complete ionic reaction, we're going to separate our soluble salts. Since these are all salts, we will separate them. So potassium becomes the potassium cation, chloride becomes the chloride anion, silver and nitrate both return to their ionic form in solution. <clears throat> Silver chloride, however, is insoluble. It says in the problem itself that it is a precipitate, so we will not separate it. And potassium and nitrates are always soluble, so we will show them separated as well. So this is our complete ionic equation. To write the net ionic equation, we will remove the spectator ions. Remember, spectator ions are things that are the same in the reactants and the products. The potassium cation remains soluble and therefore is a spectator. And same with nitrate. Nitrate is a spectator ion here. It's the same in the forward. It is the same in the reactants and products. So the net ionic equation would be that chloride and silver form insoluble silver chloride. If you really wanted to go above and beyond, you could label their states of matter. But this is our net ionic equation for that first example. Our next one. says that potassium hydroxide is mixed with aqueous iron 3 nitrate and forms iron hydroxide and potassium nitrate. Again, first thing is you're going to need to balance the reaction one potassium makes one potassium, one hydroxide cannot become three hydroxides, so we will need a three coefficient here. Meaning three potassiums would need to make three potassiums, and by doing that, we now have a balanced reaction. Once we have a balanced reaction, we can begin writing our complete ionic equation. The complete ionic equation is to break up everything that is soluble. Three potassium hydroxides would make three potassium cations and three hydroxide anions. Iron three nitrate will break up into iron three and three nitrate anions. Iron hydroxide, however, is insoluble, so we will leave it together. 
iron three hydroxide stays together and our three potassium nitrates make three potassium cations and three nitrate anions. Net ionic equations have us remove the spectator ions. The spectator ions are things that are the same in the reactants and products. Three potassiums remain three potassiums and three nitrates remain three nitrates. So they are our spectator ions. So the net ionic equation is just everybody who was involved in the overall reaction, which would be hydroxide anions and iron cations, giving us iron three hydroxide precipitate. And with that, you can finish uh, page 17 to 21. It's that many pages. It's only about five or six problems because I gave you lots of space to write the molecular equation, the complete ionic equation, the net ionic equation, and to draw a particle sketch of the net ionic equation. Not all of them have a particle sketch for you to complete. It is mostly the precipitate reactions I ask you to do that. In which case, I'm looking for you to do something like the picture here, where you show the spectator ions still separate and the net ionic equation forming that precipitate that performs. You'll also notice that I don't give you the products. I expect you to determine what the products are. Each reaction does form an insoluble salt, so please uh, keep that in mind. I will see you next time when we go over true stoichiometry, which is determining the amount of products from the a certain amount of reactants or vice versa. We will see you next time.